。今日、先生、you ready to go? OK, yes. じゃあ、先生、よろしくお願いします。My name is Yokoko,、uh, roughly translated Jade Lamp. My education is as a monk, not an educator. So,、uh, learning to teach children Buddhism has been largely trial and error with a lot of feedback from the children themselves and parents and some guidance from real educators. Over the years, I persisted because parents wanted some spiritual foundation for their children. And because young adults have a tendency to make children, and the temple needs young people to survive. So part of my inspiration was to support having young people around. And this is for the sake of the Dharma and future generations. The Sangha needs to support the many generations that are alive today. I had an intuition that without a way to integrate children and a way to integrate young adults, our, our temple, and maybe a whole slew of temples, Would wither and die because so many,、um, I would say, Soto Zen temples. I don't know about other temples, but so many Soto Zen temples are made up largely of converts, boomers, and we are aging. And for my part, My introduction to Buddhist practice and Buddha Dharma saved me from a life of meaninglessness and despair. And my gratitude for the Dharma means it is important for me to be part of bringing this forward so that others can partake. I have been given a gift. And I need to pass it forward. That is roughly the why of teaching Buddhism to children. But I want, and I, I can't spend as much time as I would like talking about the why and, or the how, but I want to explain some, a condensation of some findings. That have come to me through these years. I heard on the radio this morning from a journalist turned novelist trust is the fabric that holds society together. Trust is so easily broken. Even pre verbal children recognize and react to dishonesty, to unfairness, and to unkindness. And they react favorably when kindness is acted out in front of them. Even without words, it is recognized. I want to assert that when teaching Buddhism, we cannot try to teach an ism. The Dharma of the Buddha Dharma is not a dogma that can be taught as a catechism, at least not at first. We need to learn, earn the, the trust and the openness. That comes through kindness and fairness and acceptance and gentleness. It's been over 30 years that I have led Dharma Rain's children program. I've retired from it now. 
but I've been a teacher, a mentor to teachers, and an administrator in the program. And the development of our program hit a lot of bumps along the road. But it always set things right again when we could remember that being kind and respectful to children was the only thing that really mattered. I like to sum it up in the phrase, context is more important than content. The environment, the way in which you greet the children, take care of the children, talk to the children, listen to the children, is more important than what you fill their heads with. To this end, I've been very deliberate about who I allow to take on a teaching role with the children. A teacher must have some of the qualities Fatsang lists among the virtues. The virtue of maintaining, this is a quote, the virtue of maintaining dignified, regulated, exemplary conduct. The virtue of treating beings gently and harmoniously honestly and straightforwardly, end quote. Fatsang is listing these as part of the gateway to enlightenment. But it's not just our enlightenment that we are fostering when we undertake the virtue of maintaining dignified, regulated, exemplary conduct, and the virtue of treating beings gently and harmoniously, honestly and straightforwardly. Because as Daijaku said, we are all connected. We are all one body. When we take care in this way, we are taking care of of our own enlightenment and the enlightenment of all beings, including that screaming two-year-old in the corner. In addition to that kind of virtue, I also looked for skills in art, music, drama, and storytelling. And this is because Buddhism is a living thing, and it needs multiple modes of expression and investigation and because art, music, drama, and storytelling speak to the heart in a way that a lecture does not, it invokes And teaching, whether it's Buddhism or mathematics, needs to draw the student in. I've also tried to address the physical environment to the size of children, accommodate their physical needs, an accessible bathroom a snack, room to move around. One of the bumps we hit was when we were doing a transition from one property to another. And for a while, our Sunday school program, the Dharma school program, had to share space with the Montessori program, our Frog Song Montessori preschool. And there was a conflict between a child's need to explore with their hands and our need to keep the Montessori tools and materials safe for the preschool program and in order. And that kind of conflict can dilute the supportive atmosphere we were aiming for. So we try to keep 
things that the children are exposed to good for them, helpful and supportive. And their emotional needs require a lot of patience and understanding from the adults in the room. Noise, disorder, competition, aggression, restlessness, foul language, defiance can inspire a teacher to try to stop the behavior in an assertive way, sometimes an aggressive way, before trying to understand or find a response that is wise. I had an experience at the Abbey. I used to think, that I didn't get angry. And I had the experience of being uh, put in the animal department and we had a herd of goats at the monastery. And one of my jobs was to take the goats out of their pen and walk them in the woods. And goats are herd animals. And they don't obey unless you are the lead goat. And I was trying to be nice. And that does not work. And as I got more and more frustrated, I found I really wanted to take one of these goats and just ram her head into the nearest tree. I was so angry. And I was so shocked that I could get that angry. And I am grateful to those goats for teaching me that I am also human and I also have anger. And I learned to be the lead goat in that herd without killing anybody. That's goat wisdom. So I rarely allowed an adult in the room unless they had had several years of meditation practice and self-reflection. And I had had opportunity to observe them and others had had an opportunity to observe that they had some kind of tolerance and elasticity that those are important qualities when you are dealing with a herd of goats, kids. We are not running a hippie commune with no discipline, correction, feedback, or instruction, but I believe that leading with discipline and the word no just leads to conformity without real engagement. As they say in improv, lead with yes and instead of no. So while forming and building our program, we had to spend a lot of time in the beginning establishing some basic agreements about proper decorum and how we would show respect for one another. Because everybody wants to be respected. After a time, it wasn't necessary to repeat these themes more than once a year. And that's because it became a culture that perpetuated itself through the dignified, well-regulated teachers and the growing respectful dignity of the students. It's contagious. If you work to maintain an environment where that is valued, it is contagious. Our numbers have diminished since the disruption of pandemic, but I believe the culture is still intact. The Dalai Lama is often quoted as saying that his religion is kindness. 
Although the history of Buddhism is marred in many instances of physical and mental violence, the Dharma unerringly points us back to emptiness and the Buddha nature that binds all beings into one suchness with an infinity of faces. I've been good friends, a good friend for many years with Doug and Linda Carnine, who have taken their many years of Zen practice and realization and established the Choose Kindness Foundation. Their foundation and several books seek to teach the tools for choosing kindness outside the trappings of identified religion. They are acting as bodhisattvas to teach the bodhisattva way to people who would not otherwise choose to learn. Quoting Fatsang again, First is the virtue of subtle action according to conditions without convention. This means initiating action based on reality for the widespread welfare of sentient beings. Sentient beings' faculties and capacities are not the same, so they receive understanding in myriad different ways. Their inclinations are not the same, so they receive understanding in myriad different ways. Their inclinations are not the same, so they are given teachings according to their state of potentiality, like being, medis, give, excuse, like being given medicines in accordance with their illness. This meaning is thoroughly clarified in the Vimalakirti scripture. End of quote. Children are individuals. They have different faculties and capacities and they are at different stages of development mentally, emotionally, ethically, and spiritually. So the content of their lessons and activities must be prepared to meet them where they are. But the warmth of kindness, acceptance, and respect is also Dharma. Just by being in the room with a group of children, singing, doing an art project, telling a story, or sharing thoughts, while maintaining kind, wholehearted attention, is teaching the Dharma. And this, I think, is the key to the success of our program for children. Some of the children I have taught still express their gratitude well into adulthood. Some are members of other sanghas. Some have become members here. Some write me postcards, send me pieces of their art, expressing their gratitude. And I hear from their parents that they still quote things that they have learned in our program as foundational. I am proud of these children, these adults, because of who they have become and because what they are giving to the world. I'm running out of time here. So I'm not going to give any more details. But I want to say that public school has been caught up in the same fractious divisions that are troubling the whole of our divided culture. And so teaching from my point of view, from where I have served, I'm speaking from a place of privilege. I never had to worry about making my kids ready for a standardized test. Or I never had a parent that wanted to ban books in the library. 
But I sincerely believe that our Buddhist practice seeps into the fabric of our lives so completely that it spills into the communities in which we work and play. And so our Buddhist awakening is manifest in kindness, honesty, straightforwardness. Inclusiveness and equity are obvious when we orient toward the Dharma that all beings are the same, and yet they all have different faces. Uh,